Westbrook. My name is Hannah and I'm one of the pastors here. It's so good to be able to worship online together with all of you. If you would, do me a favor and pull out your Church Center app on your phone and fill out an InTouch card. If you don't have the app, you can find the InTouch card on our website. On it, we just want to know who is worshiping with us and where you're worshiping. Um, you can also fill out any ways that we can be praying for you on your InTouch card. Today, Pastor Mont is continuing on his series on Revelation. If you want to follow along, you can pull out your Bibles and follow along with us. I'm going to pray over our time together, and then we'll get right into worship. God, thank you so much for providing a space for us to worship together um, no matter where we are. Thank you for this online platform that keeps us connected. Thank you for the resources that it takes to, to, to make this happen, God. We love you, and we are so thankful that we get to worship together. It's in your name that I pray. Amen.
hello Westbrook and Westbrook Online. My name is Hannah and I am one of the pastors here. I'm so glad that we can be worshiping together. If you would, please take out your phone, pull out the Church Center app and fill out an in-touch card. If you don't have the Church Center app, you can find the link to it on our website, westbrook.church. Um, we just wanna know um, who's with us today, whether online or in, in person. You can also let us know how we can be praying for you. Here, here at Westbrook, we believe there are four markers of a healthy disciple, worship, practices, action, and connection. And everything we do here revolves around those four things. I wanted to let you know of a few things that are coming up soon. First things first, we have started collecting gifts for Gift Mart on December 12th. Each year we partner with Irene King Elementary School for this event where families in financial stress can buy Christmas gifts at a discounted price. Then all proceeds that we collect will go directly back to the school. We're really excited to bless Irene King in this way, especially since there are increased needs, increased financial needs to adapt to virtual and hybrid learning this year. It's also great that we can provide a resource for families who want to make Christmas Christmas special for their families. Now in years past, we were able to kind of make this a family friendly serving event and we're not able to do that this year, but we do have a small gift mart team who is ready to, to run this event. For everyone else, we encourage you to partner with us by donating gifts for school age children. We'll be collecting gifts through the month of November. Please check our website for more information and you can also shop our Amazon wish list. That link is on our website. Just a couple other announcements. Registration for Encounter is now open. Encounter is our winter retreat for Westbrook students. So middle school and high school students, they'll be retreating in Lake Geneva on January 15th through 18th. That's MLK weekend. I know that all of our students are excited for a much needed break and Encounter is the perfect, perfect place for them to connect with God and with each other. January is really not all that far off from now, so you definitely want to save the date and register as soon as possible. As always, you can register on the Church Center app or on our website. And if you have any questions, you can contact Pastor Jake. Finally, if you have a newborn baby in your house, we wanna celebrate with you and, and offer you a chance to dedicate your child to the Lord. Baby dedications will take place during Westbrook services soon, but first we want to invite you to the First Look Baby Dedication Meeting on November 14th. At this meeting, you can learn more about baby dedication and how we as a church want to support you and your children in the coming years. You can register for that class on the Church Center app. We're gonna take a moment to pray over our offering. If you're new here or if you're a guest, feel no pressure to give. Um, you can give online or if you're in person at one of the drop boxes at the back of the room. This offering is in part why we're able to gather together in our new Westbrook space. It's helped us in our long awaited construction project, which is ultimately to provide a space for ministry to grow in the coming years. So thank you for partnering with us in this way. And as we head towards the holiday season, this offering will also go towards events and initiatives like Gift Mart, where we can provide a way for families in, in financial distress to experience the joy of Christmas. And again, all of the money raised um, from that event and through this offering. We'll go right back to Irene King as well. So let's pray over this offering. God, thank you so much for inviting us to partner with you in ministry. Thank you for the many ways recently that we've been able to do that. Thank you um, for continually giving us opportunities to, to serve our community. Lord, we love to, to be a blessing. We thank you for blessing us that we so that we can be a blessing. Thank you, God, for allowing us to, to partner with you in ministry and, and to see, see ministry flourish. It's in your name that I pray. Amen. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to Westbrook Church. I know you've heard that already today, but welcome again. Welcome to this place that uh, seeks to help you know Christ fully and make him known. Welcome to this place that helps you know that God will make a way when there seems to be no way. Welcome 
uh, to this place that seeks to preach a Christ and point you and your family to the hope and the love of God. Man, oh man, it's great to have you here this weekend, and uh, we're so thrilled that you're joining us on this amazing journey. A shout out to our online family. Uh, we're so glad that you're with us, and whether you're with us live or with, with, your, with us online, uh, we want you to feel welcome, and we want you to know that we want to connect with you. Uh, we want you to get involved. We want you to get uh, engaged. We want you to invite your family and friends. However you're worshiping, stay in, engaged with us. There's a lot of cool things happening at Westbrook that we want you to know about. And so not only is Westbrook a place where you can connect with community uh, and ministry, we also want this to be a place where you are challenged to share the love of Christ when you leave this place and when you leave a, a weekend service. And that's the perfect segue into our message time today. If you're just joining us at Westbrook, then let me fill you on in, I should say, let me fill you in a little bit on where we are message-wise. We're preaching right through this book, uh, an intriguing book called the Book of Revelation. And if you want to go ahead, uh, grab your phones, grab your Bibles, and go ahead and pull up the Book of Revelation so that you can follow along. Uh, everybody wants to know about the Book of Revelation, so if you have it on your phone, go ahead and pull it up, all right, and follow along. Everybody wants to talk about this topic that the Book of Revelation refers to, the, about heaven. And so we're going to talk about that today. We're in this series. And so, so far, here's what we've, we've learned. For the person who gets to heaven, we're going to encounter Christ powerfully. That's Revelation chapter 1. And then chapters 2 and 3, we're going to learn to love the church honestly. That's Revelation chapter 2 and 3. We're going to worship God wholeheartedly. That's what Revelation chapter 4 and 5 talk about. We're going to learn how to endure suffering patiently. That's Revelation chapter 6 and 7. The next section challenges us to do our part and to bear witness boldly. So if you will, go ahead and open your Bibles to Revelation chapters 8 through 11. Revelation 8 through 11. Now, as you're finding that, let me just say uh, something that most people are familiar with, uh, something that around this church we believe entirely the Bible teaches that a day is coming when the trumpet will sound and the eastern sky will open up and Jesus will come back to earth riding on the clouds followed by his angels. And his story will end and Jesus will return, or history will end, I should say. And his story will be fulfilled. His story will be fulfilled and Jesus will, will, will return and everybody will be judged and some will be in God's presence in heaven forever and ever, ever. Others will be sent to eternal torment or what we call hell. And we know that Christ's return, according to Scripture, will, will be unexpected, yes? And it will be without warning. It's going to be, as the Bible says, it's going to be like a thief in the night. But we know it, it, it will happen, and we believe it will happen maybe soon. We don't know when it will happen, but, but we around here believe it will happen. Maybe even today. Maybe even today. We believe that Jesus is coming back to take his people and his church to to be with us in heaven for all eternity. So the question of the day is this. The question of the day is this. If Jesus returned today, what would you like him to catch you doing? You got that? If Jesus were to return today, what would you like him to catch you doing? In fact, let's take a multiple choice test, okay? All right, you guys ready for this? If, if, if Jesus returned today, what would you like him to catch you doing? Would you like him to catch you praying? How about that? Praying, is that good? Yes? All right. You're out to dinner with your friends, maybe. Actually, no, you can't really do that right now because of COVID. Let's say that COVID was not a part of it, and you're out to dinner with your friends, and you're at home run in pizza. The pizza has just been delivered to your table, and you close your eyes to say a short prayer. Dear Lord, and suddenly you hear a voice from heaven from above, yes, you know, he answers. And you open your eyes and you see Jesus descending into the dining room of Home Run Inn Pizza to take you home. How would that be? Is that a good choice? If, if he came today. Here's the second thing. Maybe you're worshiping. Second option. You're praying, you're worshiping. You're, you're at church singing. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. You're singing, right? And the name of Jesus Christ, my King, suddenly the roof of the building is peeled back and, and, and we all ascend towards Jesus singing. How cool would that be? Maybe you're baptizing somebody. There's our third choice, right? 
you're standing in the water with someone that you've led to Christ and you're saying those words that you've heard before, buried with him in death, raised to walk in the newness of life. And suddenly when you say raised to walk with him, you start rising out of the water and Jesus is taking you home. That's letter C. Would that be a good choice? Maybe letter D, you're watching Schitt's Creek or playing Among Us or you're mindlessly scrolling through TikTok videos. Would you, like, would you like that? No, okay. I think my answer would be letter C, right? In light of Christ's imminent return, what should we be busy doing? That's the question of the day. I think we should all be busy pointing people and others to Christ. We should be busy witnessing. We should be busy inviting other people to church and to a connection with Christ. Second Timothy uh, chapter 4, Paul puts it this way. Look at the screen. He says, in the presence of God and of Christ who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. What does it say? What does he say? He says, preach the word. Preach the word. In view of Christ's return, we must be diligently all working to tell everyone about him and to point people to him that they might accept him. And that is the message and the big idea for this next section of Revelation, Revelation chapters 8 through 11. If Revelation chapter 6 and 7 tells us to endure suffering patiently, then Revelation chapters 8 through 11 tell us to bear witness boldly. And if Revelation chapter 6 and 7, uh, we saw the, the seven seals being opened up. Did you, did you hear or watch that sermon? In this next section, we see seven trumpets being blown by seven angels. So in some ways, this will be a little bit of a rerun from last weekend. But the point is this. Share your faith. Be a witness. Tell others about Jesus. Don't keep this thing to yourself. Here's how it plays out. Get this. Look at your Bibles, all right? After the seventh seal tells us, after the seventh seal has us in heaven, we rewind the tape a little bit with the first trumpet, and we start back on earth with the time of suffering. And they're going, oh man, let's not talk about suffering again. We, we looked at that last week. This time around, however, the story begins to ramp up. When the four trumpets are blown, suffering comes just as it did with the first four seals, but instead... One-fourth of the earth being affected. This time it's one-third of the earth being affected. One-third of the grass and the earth and the trees and the sea creatures and ships and rivers and sun and moon and stars. And all of that feels God's wrath. God has turned up the dial on his power and, and on his judgment. He has moved the dial from 25% to 33%. Right? But before this sets you off, listen to how one commentator explains it. He says this, do not take this as a sign of God's increasing hostility. This is an act of mercy. He is, as Second Peter 2, 9 says, he is patient, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Given the stubborn rebellion of human hearts, God would have every right to turn the judgment dial to a hundred, right, and wipe mankind out in its entirety, but he doesn't. This commentator goes on. No, God instead brings judgment on a minority in the hope that a majority will take heed and repent. He is turning up the heat to get their attention. When Israel rebelled in the wilderness, God's righteous judgment, you know, consumed some of the outskirts of the camp, but not the entire encampment, prompting the people to repent. Numbers chapter 11. Mercy stayed God's hand from greater destruction, and his judgment was a warning, calling people to turn from their wicked ways. I love those words from that commentator. And so if you read this, I encourage people to read it before you, we, we got into this, right? Uh, were you able to see that? And, and I know it's hard with all this weird imagery, but to put it very simply, put it very simply, God is warning the people of earth that if they do not repent and turn to God, then very bad things are going to happen. And it's no accident that this, that this second set of seven judgments is symbolized by, by trumpets, right? Because throughout the Bible, trumpets signaled something significant was coming, something momentous was about to happen, a, a king's entrance, a, an army's attack, a divine 
rescue. If you've read Scripture, you see this, right? Trumpets were warnings, and the message of the trumpet blast was what? Get yourself ready. Get yourself ready. Well, in this next section of Revelation, in this next section, these couple chapters, God is blowing his horn, all right? And he is saying, beware, get on track, get it together, get your priorities straight, get it worked out. This is going to happen. And while he says to the world, what he says to the world, uh, you know, those words, he's also saying to us to challenge the people to spread the word, to sound the alarm, to get the word out, to be bold in telling others that they better shape up, they better get it together. Why? Because here's the deal. Here's the deal. Each day that people live is another chance to come to faith. And the urgency that comes with it is that none of us know with 100% certainty that we will have another chance tomorrow. And so the trumpet blast is sounding, and we better get our act together. And that's why, you know, uh, that's why when my heart races when I look around and I see all these people in our community that don't know Christ. They, they don't have the hope of Christ. That's why we beg people at Westbrook nearly every single week, invite your friends. Invite your friends to church. If you're coming back to church, invite your friends to come with you. Make a reservation for them. Invite them to watch us online, you know, to get the message. Invite them to know Christ. Introduce them to Jesus through Westbrook. That's why I say it all the time. And you can soft pedal it if you want. Uh, but, but you're sounding the alarm and you're potentially saving people from eternal separation from God. And that's what this section is talking about. We, the church, are called to speak God's message to the world. You see, too often the American church wants to delegate uh, that task to its hired personnel. And a lot of times people are like, well, you know, you're the pastor, so you need to be doing all that. You need to be saying all those words, right? And to preachers, and they can, they're content to sit on the sidelines and let and let the professionals, right, do the work while they cheer us on. An old comedian quipped, an old comedian quipped, I'm a Jehovah's bystander. They invited me to be a Jehovah's witness, but I didn't want to get involved, right? He said, I'm a Jehovah's bystander. Too many contemporary Christians have declined God's invitation to witness, to spread the word. The fact is, though, it's not an invitation, is it? What, it's a command, isn't it? It's a command to go out and, and to spread the gospel. In fact, that's the last command that Jesus gave us before he ascended into heaven. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. The Great Commission was not just for the apostles, but it was for all believers. And if you're a Christian, you're called to be an evangelist. One preacher said it this way. I love this. Uh, he said it this way. He said, you got into the ministry, and you know, you got into the ministry when you got out of the baptistry. You got in there, as soon as you got out of the bedroom, we have to see ourselves as witness. I like the lady who quipped about her job. She said, oh, I'm a missionary cleverly disguised as a grocery store clerk. What does that mean? Well, we're called to go. In, in, in a lost world, right, no matter our vocation, friends, listen, we're all missionaries. And, and, and if you read this, if you read these chapters in preparation for this message, then you saw in Revelation chapter 10 and 11, God gave us some clarity about this call to witness. We are to witness from God's word. We are to witness through hard suffering. And then we are to witness with great urgency. So that's what I want to talk about for the next couple of moments, right from these, this passage of Scripture. We are to witness from God's word. We are to witness through hard suffering. We are to witness with great urgency urgency. So let's break these down. First of all, we are to witness from God's Word. Revelation chapter 10. If you have your Bibles open, flip over there. An angel gives John a scroll and tells him to eat it, all right? And immediately we know that this scroll is the Word of God, or at least a portion of it, because in the Old Testament we see the prophet Ezekiel eating a scroll of Scripture. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 3, and John says, just like Ezekiel, it tasted like what? It tasted like honey. And the point is this, God's word is sweet to a hungry world. 
sweet to a hungry world. And the good news of God's grace is a welcome taste to the world who so desperately needs it. When we witness to the world around us, we are, we are always wise to point people straight to the Bible, right? Because there's power in simply preaching the Bible. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 says, For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates deeply, even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. Right? So listen, when you and I witness to the world, we give them this sweet, life-changing power of God's Word. It was sweet to the taste. But then it goes on. It goes on. We are to witness through hard suffering. We are to witness through hard suffering. When John, when John tells us, when John tastes the scroll, it tastes sweet. But when he swallows God's message, what happens? It becomes bitter. John chapter, or Revelation chapter 10 and verse 10. That's because not everybody wants to hear the hard truth. Right? Karl Marx said that that religion is the opiate of the masses, a sedative to make them feel better. But as another preacher named Tim Keller puts it, Christianity is by no means an opiate of the people. It's more like smelling salts. Does that make sense? Right? One guy said, the gospel rouses those who hear it from their self-centered dream and, and awakens them to the bracing reality of their sinfulness. So, just as smelling salts are hard to take, God's truth is not always welcome. Another guy says, if you, if you try to be the light of the world, you're going to attract a few bugs. <laughs> and so just know this. Just know this. When we faithfully proclaim God's message, we will face hostility. And to be honest, sometimes it's just easier to stay quiet, isn't it? Because we don't, because because being a witness can be difficult, and 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 being evangelist can be challenging. Sometimes we don't know what to say, right? Sometimes we, you know, we don't want to be viewed as a as a religious crazy. We don't want to be seen as as intolerant and judgmental. I get all of that, but 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 that is why I need these chapters in the book of Revelation. Get this: John doesn't write doesn't write as much as to instruct us in witnessing as much as he writes to inspire us to witnessing. And so, be faithful. Share your faith. Share, your, share the gospel. Do your part. Here's the third thing. We are to witness with great urgency. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 11. God miraculously raises the two, witness for us, two witnesses from the dead, perhaps picturing our own resurrection with Christ at the end of time, because when the seventh trumpet blows... We're brought to the end of the world. Christ's kingdom has arrived. The time has come for judging the dead. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 18. We've been given notice. And the time for us to witness is short. And the next blast is going to be Christ's return. We must speak God's message with urgency. Y'all believe that? We don't know when he's going to come back. And we've we got to be urgent about this, Right? And that's what you've heard me. If you've been around Westbrook for any amount of time, you've heard me, you've heard me cast this vision over and over and over and over again. Share your faith. Invite your friends. Why? Because there are 495,000 people in a seven-mile radius of this place who need Jesus. In this town, there are, in this town of Bolenberg, there are 74,000 people, most of them, Most of them who need Jesus in their lives. We're begging you to do your part. Be be a witness and we'll help you. We'll train you. We'll direct you. We'll we'll encourage you. But you got to do your part. You got to be a bold witness. Because the trumpet blast is going to come. And you may be ready, but there's people in your life who aren't ready yet. So you got to do your part. And so after you get encouraged each weekend, whether it's live or whether it's online, you get encouraged, then we challenge you to figure out how you can serve the rest of the week and how you can be Jesus the rest of the week and how you can be a bold witness the rest of the week, how you can be a witness for Christ in the next six days. And so you need some ideas on how to do that? Well, 
Let, let, me, let me just be super practical with some words of application, right? And then we're going to close. Ready for this? Here's how you can be a bold witness. Number one, be super strategic with your words. All right? Super strategic with your words. And I listen, I, I know we're still sort of limited on, on seeing people and having connections and, 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 and running into people. And it's not the same, right? And, and running into your friends at, at, at practices or the gym or school nights or so forth. We used to do that all the time. Remember those days? Right? But, but maybe you don't run into people, but you still talk to people, don't you? And you still text people, don't you? Why not try something like this? Super strategic with your words. Try something like this. When a friend says to you, oh my gosh, how are you? What's new? You can say, well, my job's going okay. And, 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 and my family is doing great in spite of this, but my spiritual life and my church life is awesome. Which one do you want to talk about first? And probably when they say it that way, they're going to say, oh, wow, that's awesome. Tell me about your spiritual life and your church life. You see, if you set it up right, if you set it up right, you can spend some time being a witness for Christ in the course of a normal conversation. So don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't hold back. Grow in your love and your connection with Christ and be a bold witness. So, so be super strategic with your words. Here's the second thing. Reset your social media use. Uh, yes, if you're on social media. In, in my opinion, this has been an ugly year for social media, right? So much anger, so much vitriol, so much disagreement. Starting today, why not reset the tone on your social media? because you're in control of your social media. Maybe you can start with a Thanksgiving theme. This is Thanksgiving month, right? Maybe take part less in the political and the cultural and the COVID stream and jump deeply into the Thanksgiving stream. So be a witness with your words on social media. Here's the third way that you can be a bold witness. Get yourself prayed up and filled up with God's word. Broken record here, I know. But stay in God's Word. Stay faithful in prayer. Sign up for a Bible reading or a Bible listening plan on version. Stay in prayer. Contact us on how you can get in a group or you can get in Rooted or a ministry team when all these things are going to be announced, right? All while you connect with God and with Christ through His Word. And when you get prayed up and when you get read up in the Word, you can be a bold witness for Christ. And then thirdly, or actually fourthly, I guess, ratchet up your boldness quotient, all right? Be super strategic with your words. Reset your social media use. Get yourself prayed up and filled up with God's word and ratchet up your boldness quotient. I, I know that sometimes being a witness for Christ can be scary, yes? I know it can be intimidating. Sometimes you're like, well, that's just not me. You know, Mont, you can talk to a a stranger about anything, right? Anytime you want. That's just not me. That's just not me. Well, think about it this way, all right? Think about it this way. If you were a scientist and you discovered the cure for cancer, what would you do? Would you keep it to yourself? No. You would spread the word. You wouldn't be shy. You'd want everyone to know the good news. You'd shout it from the street corners. You'd tell everyone and anyone whether they were listening or not, you'd share the good news. Are you tracking me here? Good news, right? The gospel, good news, that's what we have. And so we need to be bold witnesses and tell the world that Jesus saves and that heaven can be yours when you come to Christ. So be a bold witness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changes not thy compassions, they
singing everything. Once there were songs for everything, songs for planting, for growing, for harvesting, for eating, getting drunk, falling asleep, for sunrise, birth, mind break, and war. For death, those are the heaviest songs and they have to be pried from the earth with shovels of grief. Now all we hear are falling in love songs and falling apart after falling in love songs. The earth is leaning sideways and a song is emerging from the floods and fires. Urgent tendrils lift toward the sun. You must be friends with silence to hear. The songs of the guardians of silence are the most powerful. They are the most rare. I wanted to share these words from Poet Laureate Joy Harjo today as we move into our time of communion. If you're worshiping with us in person, you should have grabbed communion on your way in today. If not, please feel free to get up right now and go to either of the two stations at the back of the room. And if you're worshiping with us online, please gather any elements that you have that can represent this meal. These past few months and weeks, and especially the last few days, have been overloaded with noise. From the overwhelming noises of the pandemic, of racial and political unrest, of a divisive, frustrating election season, it's no wonder that the noises in our heads rarely quiet themselves long enough to experience holy silence. Now I know Pastor Mont talked today about bearing witness boldly and loudly and with bravery, but I don't want us to miss the powerful song of silence. It's in the silence that we hear. It's in the rare moments of silence that we have a cosmic opportunity to experience the Holy Spirit. Let's pray over our communion meal. O oh, Creator God, there is a song for everything. There is a song for our hurt, our pain, our confusion. There is a song for our celebration and growth. There is a song for heartbreak, a song for relief, a song for just rage. There are songs to declare, songs to bear witness, songs to bring us closer to each other and closer to you. O oh, Creator God, thank you for inviting all of our songs to this communion table and for singing all of these songs with us. Thank you for saving us through the song of your Son. Our song now is rarely sung. It's our song of silence. With it, we lament. We repent. We draw closer to your Holy Spirit. May we become more aware of your presence. May we become active listeners when you speak in the quietest moments. Oh God, we befriend the silence now, eager to hear more of you.